Welcome to another episode of Locked on Bulls. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Zach Levine. Apparently, he's going to be re-signing early in the free agency. What do the Bulls do, and who do they target after Zach Levine signs? We'll also be giving our takeaways from Dalen Terry's first presser out there with Billy Donovan and AK. And then lastly, we'll talk about what type of team we see the Chicago Bulls putting on the court next season. All that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat the Designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central, and we're about to jump right into it. Pat, so we now have, it's gone, like I said, complete full circle. Now it's back where we started to. <laughs> Zach Levine is expected to re-sign at midnight, opening of free agency, a full uh, a max level contract with the Chicago Bulls for the full five years. Now, we're not actually here to talk about that. You can mention a little bit about that if you want to, but I want to more so take this to the next steps, right? Zach Levine resigns. Who are the very next calls that the Chicago Bulls should make? Who are their target? Who should be their targets? Who do we feel should be their targets early in the free agency? What do you got, Pat? Well, it seems like we're still hearing that they're in a lot on John Collins, which is. Uh, a little surprising, right? You thought the pick might be included on that. If you feel like you can get John Collins without giving up the pick, maybe you feel pretty good, right? Maybe it's a future pick or something like that. Um, the Bulls are in it to play big boy basketball. Uh, that that means sometimes you're going to have to give up some draft capital, especially when you have a good mix of young guys and veterans on this team, which I think the Bulls do. So I think they, they try to make the call on John Collins, probably out on Rudy Gobert at this point. Mm -hmm. Um just because I don't think you have the capital anymore after the pick is gone. I think you would have had to include this season's pick for that to work. Um, and I would say, I mean, listen, you you would assume it's going to be big guys, right? Like we, AK told us, uh, uh, or not AK, Mark Eversley and AK actually told us that mm -hmm. their priority this offseason in free agency was going to be finding shot blockers for this team. So I think, I think you're going to be looking at those uh, uh, John Collins, possibly a Mitchell Robinson. I don't know what the Knicks are doing anymore. You know what I mean? Nobody like, knows. I mean, right, like nobody knows what the Knicks are doing anymore. Like it's like, no, we're not getting, we're not resigning them, we're not matching them. Ah, we might. You know? Uh, oh no, a, we're going to trade our 11th pick, not get any rookies because we want to make space. I'm so confused. Uh, trade Kimber Walker, Nick Claxton, even from Brooklyn, they're talking about not matching him. He's mm -hmm. an interesting name on the market. Yeah, I mean, so there's a couple of names I could see the Bulls going after, man. And I think I I think you might even see a, a little uh, little Bulls reunion uh, this year. That's my that's my uh, so that's my hot take. I think you might see a Thadric Johnson back in a Bulls jersey as a backup power forward option because we know that him and uh, him and Zach were really close um, yeah. Yeah. from their time in Minnesota and here in Chicago, and I'm sure Thad would love to make the playoffs with Zach. So I, I, I looked at this in tears. You know, I like to do my tears. That's the way my yeah. brain works. That's the way I like to explain things. That's the way, <laughs> that's the way it happens. Um, so first off, the top teams, top tiers, right, is that I think you got to look at uh, – Bobby Porters and Mitchell Robinson first. That got to be your first calls out the gate to just see. Hey, we got this full mid-level exception. We're really willing to offer it to you. Are you going to take it? Yes or no? Bobby Porter says, hey, man, I think I'm going to stay here in Milwaukee. I think yeah. we're going gonna, gonna to try to compete for some more titles. Mitchell Robinson says, hey, man, listen, the Knicks just offered me $18 million a year. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then once that's over, the name that I actually have highest on my list is a name that is not going to jump out to a bunch of people it's not going to make some sense to some people but looking at his advanced analytics everything isaiah hartenstein from the from the los angeles clippers i'm not mad at that 8.3 points per game 4.9 rebounds per game two assists per game and a and a block per game in last year with the clippers at per keep in mind of 22.06 he is tied for the 15th highest efficiency rating in the whole entire nba his defensive rating was was tied for top 10 in his position 
at, he's an advanced analytics darling. And what that means to me, when you look at what AK and Evers, and again, his rebounding rate, again, his, he doesn't average a huge number of rebounds, but the percentage of rebounds that he gets per the, um, the amount of time he's on the floor is, is to, in the top 15 of the league. Yeah. This guy is an advanced analytics darling. And when you look at AK, when you look at trying to build a team, he's someone who can get points without needing plays called for him. He's somebody who's going to be effective on both sides of the ball. And then, again, I'm saying if you you aim higher and you strike out, Isaiah Hartenstein, I definitely think could be one of those. I think he can be the big man version of Alex Caruso, meaning no matter what the stats say, when you watch the game, you feel his impact of the game. I really do like him and his potential fitting on here with the Chicago Bulls. I wouldn't After be mad that, at him. I, I wouldn't be mad at him at a pick, right? He's a player that when you when you see him kind of get more minutes, he puts up more production. He's a guy mm -hmm. that when he played 25 plus minutes, absolutely could be a double double guy, not to 12 and 10 double double, right? It doesn't yeah. doesn't jump off of the stat sheet at you. But listen, the, you're not looking for stars this offseason. Right, like you, the Bulls if you can go, get one, you get one. But that's not necessarily right? what we're going to walk if away with. If you can get it. one, you get one. Right, like listen, if if Utah all of a sudden looks at you and says, "Yeah, uh, send us half of what we asked for, and we'll send you Rudy Gobert." Okay, now we can talk a little bit. But you're probably not getting a superstar or a star level player at that big man position here. You're not even looking for one. Again, we're talking about your backup. Big man again. Your starting lineup still going to be hopefully Lonzo, Zach, Demar, P. Will, Vooch. This is a guy that you want coming off the bench. Isaiah Hardenstein's a great name there, uh, and I think he really fits a an excellent role there for the Bulls. I, he, he brings a little bit of toughness, if I remember. Oh no, he brings a lot, lot of toughness. toughness. Lot he of got that country white boy strength. I don't even know. I if only he's remember the one scuffle with him, and it was a <laughs> it was a PG led scuffle. So I don't I don't remember I mean, him. Being... But when you're seven feet, two hundred and fifty pounds, I don't think many people gonna want to even try to attempt to scuffle with you, right? Yeah, Stephen Adams will pick you up. <laughs> well, Stephen Adams ain't picking Isaiah Harden sign up. I'm telling you that right now. That ain't happening. Um, but outside of him, another name that I know that some people may may golf at and say, why is he so high before some of these other players? Jalen Smith from Indiana. He played for the Pacers last season. Let, get this again in limited minutes. He averaged nine point two points per game, six rebounds per game, a half an assist per game, almost a block per game and had a PER of eighteen point five. And this is in limited minutes. So this is a player that also very young still, 22 years old. So you don't know what he's really going to turn into. Um, he averaged, Actually, he did average a block per game with the Pacers last season. So with that being said, he brings you not necessarily the surefire rim protection, but defensively solid, advanced analytics love him. He did what he did, his damage in 24.7 minutes per game. So that means that that's pretty much a bench player role. The yep. benefit of him, even though he's technically coming off his rookie deal, he was not extended and a qualifying offer or he wasn't extended. So with that being said, Indiana can only at the most offer him $4.5 million. He, the Bulls can price them out. With, with a with a five six million dollar contract offer and still have room to go out and keep in mind these guys I'm not saying need to be the end they probably would still need to go out and get a Thad Young if it ends up being an Isaiah Hartenstein or or Jalen Smith but these are guys that could co come in and probably if you put them in in a correct role play better than what their numbers are are, are showing you just outright I really do like I just I just I'm looking at this I love everything about it and again three point shooting. On almost four attempts per game, so he's not like he's just not uh, shooting very many. Thirty-seven percent from three-point range as a big, so he can get, provide some stretching ability. He, he gets out there on the corner threes, things like that. He projects to be able to do that. What do you think about Jalen Smith? Jalen Smith is another interesting one, right? Like I, I wouldn't mind bringing him in. I six mil leaves you about four mil to go do something with. Four, yeah, four mil mm -hmm. to go do something with with that. Uh, with your mid-level exception, you can still make some moves there. I think he's a nice he's a nice name to bring in. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at him either. Uh, I feel like he gives you that ability. It, and the thing is, right, you're not bringing in guys that you're asking them their role to completely change. I think that's the, mm -hmm. the most important thing here, right? Like I, I, a couple of people have said, go get Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee. Those are guys that can start in the NBA. Yeah. JaVale McGee plays on the bench a little bit more, but right, like he might be starting on that Phoenix team if they really do move on from DeAndre Ayton. He could be the number one option over there. 
Dwight Howard. Wait, number one option. Starter. You mean he can be the starting center? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, he's the number five option on that. Team. Um, but but you know, like and and even a Dwight Howard, right? Like Dwight Howard has said he's looking for an opportunity for him to start because he knows the kind of production he can put up if he's starting at center. So he's probably going to look for an opportunity out there if there is one where he can be the starting center. That may be Utah in the future here now with with, with Rudy Gobert making a move, right? Uh, I don't know. If I know Dwight it ain't gonna, gonna be. It ain't gonna be Kofi Coburn. Hey, bro. I know. I, I don't think Dwight gonna survive Utah if he go to Utah, bro. Don't do that, Dwight. Like, <laughs> you know. Oh, wait. Utah, oh, Utah wait. in Atlanta. Baby. What you saying? Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, nah. that now that may not be where Dwight needs to go. Keep Dwight Howard far away from Utah. Yeah, yeah, Utah ain't Atlanta, but although you do get multiple. Never mind. Anyway, uh, okay. but no, I, on, we got to wrap the segment up, brother. We finna get fired. Go ahead, <laughs> it, 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 end it, bro. Nah, man, but but uh, I, I like I like the ideas that you presented, uh, and I think that they're both uh, uh, good options for the Bulls to go after, and they're still team friendly, right? You're not wasting your entire. MLE on one guy and still and still both of them fairly young uh, Isaiah Hardenstein 24 Jalen Smith 22 yeah. you, you mentioned a Nick Claxton who's still I think 23 24 years old 23 something like so that, they're, yeah. they're players that have proven what they can bring to the NBA level but there's still a little room for progression there as well so yeah for sure I'm with it man I'm with it I would right. love to see it <laughs> All right, so next up, we're going to be talking about Dalen Terry's first presser with his coach, Billy Donovan, and the general man, well, the president of basketball operations, AK. Uh, but first, got to talk to you guys about Rock Auto. Now, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto, Rock Auto with the ever-increasing numbers. Uh, Rock Auto. Uh, I don't know why. Hey, listen, Twister took over me for a second. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX, and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand that their warehouse uh, happens to carry? You have access to computers that have access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving do-it-yourselfers like you for over 20 years. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reasonable low prices, all the parts your car will ever ever need at rockauto.com not singing it i'm not doing it not doing it dun, 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 dun. Uh, <laughs> all right pat next up gonna be talking about this person with dale and terry our rookie 18th overall selection six seven seven one wingspan that i think i feel like that got said like three times in this presser uh between ak a couple of the reporters and billy donovan all mentioning it but uh, what's your first impression from this from the kid, uh, the, our rookie? And then also, what are some? What did you feel about some of the more interesting things that AK said? He talked about how they're going to continue building the team a little bit. You even heard from Billy Donovan how he may e end up using um, Dalen Terry. But what did you think about this presser overall? Um, he didn't say much. Like you know, what I mean? <laughs> they, they, they he was an excited like, kid, right? It, it, bro, he was just like yeah. he was like, <laughs> yeah, I you know, I just play basketball, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what do I, do? <laughs> I just play basketball, man, and. I, I'm not, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that. I kind of love that he's that way, right? Because, like, you get these guys that come in here and they give you all the fluff and the rah-rah and the, you know, I just want to come in here and make the city mine and I want to make sure that I, I leave my mark on the city. And it's like, hey, yeah, you left your mark. We marched you off the roster and got you up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I kind of like that he's focused. Um, he said already, you know, he <laughs> – my favorite question is, like, but they ask him, where are you going to be? Uh, do you plan on uh, or where are you going to be working out this summer? And he looked and he was like, <laughs> he just looked, here. he was like, here, right? Like, yeah, here, right? Like, wait, do y'all know something I don't know? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, you know, he, he, he's all about his business. He's all about the action. Um, I like that. I like that he's coming in and he knows what he's doing. I'm not reading into anything this kid said because he just looked like an excited kid that's happy to be drafted into the NBA. Uh, you know, there's going to be like seven, eight channels out here that's like, he said this, and this is what it means. In the he's going to be the new leader of the Chicago Bulls bench. Like, calm down, man. bro. You know what I mean? So I'm not really <laughs> too deep into it. As far as AK, um, I think the first thing I thought after AK's comments 
was that we're going to have, for the first time in a while, another team that we will love because we will know each of the players intimately as time goes on because they're going to be here for the long haul. You might even see Kobe White here like we talked about yesterday, but I mean, I think AK is going to put together a team of guys that whether they win a championship or not are all going to be here for multiple years and a long time to come, just based on his comments. He he said continuity like 30 times in today's press conference. So. That, was a, that was a sign of saying, hey, listen, I know y'all talking a lot about us trading for XYZ. That ain't happening. It That's ain't happening. like, that ain't happening. And I'm okay so, with that. And I'm okay yeah, with that. What'd you hear? Yeah. What'd you hear? I mean, especially from some of the questions on how they were going to use Dalen with Billy. I mean, I thought that those were the most interesting, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we'll get to talking. Our last topic is talking about how we expect the team to play. But I do want to mention uh, Dalen Terry picking number 25 to honor Ben Wilson and Steve Kerr. Like already that. endearing himself to the Chicago coach. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's smooth. Yeah. Granted, I, it, we sure it's not an honor of Tyler Cook. First of all, Tyler Cook is still technically on the Bulls roster. Yeah, they they just took his number. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what he say? What he doing? Hey, what he doing? ATL? What he doing? ATL? <laughs> he just snatched it. <laughs> Let me get that. Oh, uh, wow! I didn't even think about that till you just said it. That's wild, bro. Um. <laughs> Hey, man, shout out to him. Hey, give me that number, fool. It's a full-time Jack move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just, just what I, he did seem nervous, which, listen, you put me in a in a press conference at freaking, uh, what, he's twenty, about to be 20 years old. I'm going to be oh, looking yeah. like a deer in the headlights, too. Uh, yeah. But he's saying the right things. And the thing is, is that, like I said before, I know a lot of Bulls fans. They were hoping for EJ Liddell, which we may have, we may have gotten a better player than EJ Liddell and Justin Four. Lewis. Listen, bro, like I Lewis got strapped, bro. Just, just, and people that haven't seen the hell like shit, Justin Lewis got some goon in him, bro. Um, but with that being said, like I really, I, I mean, I'm I'm happy for him. Um, he said, like I said, he's saying all the right things. It's endearing. Um, the thing with with AK and what he said, um. <sighs> I don't want to step on our on our last topic too much because about getting into this, but this was one of those press conferences that I think if you actually pay attention for what they're saying and not necessarily what you hope this team is going to do, it told you everything that you need. Yeah. Everything that you need to know. Dalen Terry is probably going to get some minutes because of his defense early on. He's probably going to get a chance to do that unless the team brings in some, some much better player or veterans coming off the bench at that wing position. Um, I look at B Billy Donovan seems to be excited about the versatility of him. I think they're going to bring his shot along slowly. But AK basically told you guys, as we said early into this segment, he basically told you guys, it ain't happening. The Gobert, it ain't happening. John Collins, we'll see. But for the most part, they're expecting to bring this team and this core back. Now, what that means for Kobe White, I personally think that Kobe White is, is definitely probably still in the market if they get a better deal. But I would not be shocked. Don't be shocked if Kobe White, at the start of the season, is wearing the Chicago Bulls uniform, getting his 16 eight to 18 minutes off the bench, and being good in that role. So I will say the two things that I kind of noticed that AK said, he, he, mm -hmm. first off, he's very real on Kobe White's situation, which I yeah. think a lot of Bulls fans were, I get it. Kobe White got himself back, but he's very real on like the start that Kobe White had. That was very slow. He's coming off a of shoulder surgery, hasn't had a training camp. Like he, mm -hmm. he takes into account what players go <laughs> through day by day, which is great because AK was a player. So he understands yeah. that. So after hearing today's presser, I kind of was like, Kobe might be on this team. Because of how he talked about, uh, and even how Billy Donovan talked about, right, like the situation where um, Kobe was the point, and then he was on the bench, and then he was the two, and then he was on the bench, and then he mm -hmm. came in and gave you some three, then he was back on the bench, and then he was hurt, then he came back, and he was talking about kind of all the changes that Kobe had to adjust to throughout the season, which everybody on the team did, but but kind of the toll that that takes on you, and he, he spoke very glowingly of them. Uh, and the other thing that, that AK... Uh, 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 or that Billy Donovan brought out that that I noticed, and it was he said it very subtly. He talked about how Io was more of a combo guard in college, mm -hmm. but that he played mostly point here, and he expects him to continue at that position, telling you there that 
Jalen Terry's probably not coming in here to be your backup point guard. He's probably coming in here to be to your be backup your two. two guard, maybe even your backup three. three, depending on Justin Lewis. And I and I the way that I look at it is is there and we'll talk about that because that's that's the next segment. So we'll get into that. I gotta say that. You like how I set that up right there. That's you you set that up, you set that up real nice, man. Go ahead, go ahead with your ad read, young. Hey man. man, let's get the read in here, man. We gotta <laughs> let you guys know that today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports development league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs, which came to an end last night. Congratulations to the Avalanche and MLB. Uh, uh, or Major League Baseball uh, latest bets and odds. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Check out the live event. They pay in the bag to mugs out here, man. Head to the mm-hmm. website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online. That's where the game starts. There you go. Get it in. Get it in. All right. Next, we're going to talk about and take what AK and, and Eversley, or AK in this situation, and BD, which is so weird. It's very uh, it's very rare that we see the two of them out there together, right? Like, yeah. it, was, it was a little weird there. But, you know, talking about Dalen Terry and how you ended the last segment saying that he's probably going to be your backup too. maybe play some three, depending on how he fills out. Javante also gets to move and play more three. I think I think Javante Green is going to be the backup three to at least start the season, which is he's going to be dangerous not having to guard, you know, 6'10", 6'11 players anymore. Um, But with that being said, is that I really do look at. The versatility that they're bringing. You mentioned Justin Lewis, right? A player that can play the three slash four. I think when they look to bring in a big man, he's going to be able to play some four and play some five. And so when you look at the versatility that's on this bench, you have AK, I'm sorry, AC, who who can guard any position, but he can play the one through the three. You have Ayo DeSumo who can play the one and two. You have Javante Green who can play the two, three, and four, as we've seen. Try to hopefully get him a little bit more away from the four and get him on that two, three, that wing a little bit more. If they do bring a fad, if they do bring like whatever they end up doing, having a we know what the starting five is, right? So I'm going to focus this first part of my conversation just on that bench. Having a bench that can offer you so many different looks, that can play with so many different players, depending on who in your starting lineup comes out. That's going to make the Chicago Bulls a more dangerous team. We see it with the Chicago Sky, and I know some people are going to roll their eyes at comparing this to women's basketball. One of the things that make the Sky such a dangerous basketball team is the versatility that they have off the bench and the weapons. Chicago Bulls may very well bring something like that. What do you think about that, Pat? No, I agree. And the thing is, right, it's depth. Um, We're talking about there could possibly still be a Kobe White on this team. That means that... Uh, you you could be talking about Dalen Terry just kind of getting minutes where he fits in, right? You could be talking about uh, 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 Justin Lewis just kind of trying to get minutes where he fits in. Those aren't bad things because you had a pretty good team last season when your bench pieces were your bench pieces and not your starters. Also, you've got them all coming back with a little bit of playoff experience and you're adding a couple of rookies into that mix as well as some veterans probably through, through trades and different things like that. So... Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what this bench could be. I will say, right, like when we talked about AK having a type, we never include Io in that. Io's the same type of player. He's just a little bit shorter. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, isn't Io's wingspan like 6'11 or something like that? His like, wingspan is ridiculous. We'll, bro, I'll look so it up like, real quick. So, so you know what I'm saying? AK is building this team so versatilely to where, like you said, Io playing the one and the two. Uh, he could play the three if he – I haven't seen – I really haven't seen pictures of Io this offseason, so I don't know how much weight he's put on. If he's put on any weight, if he's bulked up at all. But uh, Who? Io, I haven't seen. I haven't, haven't seen him. him. We haven't seen. Yeah, him. I haven't, and I haven't apparently, seen much of him this offseason. Apparently, he may not be playing in summer league either. Yeah, I, he I did hear before. that that he's not going to play summer that, league. Yeah, which is which is surprising, but you know it is what it is. He's earned not to. Looked it up. Io DeSumo's wingspan is six feet six six. What the hell? Six ten point two five. So a 6'10 wingspan at being 6'4. <laughs> AK's got a tight. Is what I'm Listen. <laughs> hey, Basically, AK is, AK is like, hey, as soon as you walk in the door, what, how, how tall are you? All right, I need your wingspan to be five inches uh, uh, longer than you are tall. Well, How What's long your wingspan? Arms is? How long yeah. your arms is? How long them arms? Fam? Hey, hey, yeah. change that light bulb. 
<laughs> lift, lift, lift up your arm a little bit real quick for me. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and come in. We're gonna go ahead and work you up. And so, you know, with that, right, like you have to look at this. Uh, you, I look at this bench as being a versatile defensive bench. And I like the mm -hmm. fact that, listen, Iowa was a scorer. Um, Justin Lewis is coming in as a guy that definitely could score the basketball, granted against tougher competition. But I tell y'all, go watch that tape. That translates. It was a hand in his face on closeouts. He was like, no, nah, you taking this Jay with you. Take that. He was pulling up from half court. He was tweaking me out. I'm not going to lie. I don't know and how the, he's and the, the, thing, the thing that stood out to me is that not only did he have three-point range at the college level, he was shooting the NBA three confidently. Yeah. And, and you remember the last time we got a a a, a solid wing player from the Marquette that, that people didn't really know about coming into the NBA? I, I, I try not to do that to myself because I get too excited. <laughs> I try not to do that to myself every time. Then I'll be like, but Jimmy. Hey, you know he's going to come with the work ethic, but you look at that, again, you look at that Bulls bench, you're starting to see kind of even last year, right? Derrick Jones, long wingspan, athletic. There, there's a theme to this bench. AK wants guys that can play up and down at every position, multiple positions, because of the injuries that they probably went that they went through last season. And you got to the point where you were playing two guards at the power forward. Yeah. For the most of the, the majority of the season, we had a shooting guard as our starting power forward. It's crazy, bro. And he wasn't bad. <laughs> he wasn't. That's the thing. He was not bad at all. Like, you, I don't mean that to throw any shots because, hey, he came in there and played his butt off. But uh, hey, he, was, he was terrible on help defense. I will say that. He was, uh, terrible. He was terrible. One thing that I want. So looking at this team, right, as we as we look for who's on the team right now, right, yeah. do you think Justin Lewis is going to make the final roster as it stands right now? Ooh. I think Justin Lewis will. Because I think there's going to be a move for a center, maybe not a power forward. I think they're going to try and throw a good chunk of that MLE at a center. Um, and it might even include a possible trade so that they can give that person a little more money in the future. But I... Well, M I, MLE, you can only offer... It can only be two years, so... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying for, for the future money and stuff like that, but... Yeah. I yeah, I think that I think that you're probably going to see Justin Lewis make it as Patrick Williams backup. I think Thad is the long shot. That's the okay, one I well, want. So this is the question with that. So if we're saying that the Bulls are bringing in another center, we think Justin Lewis makes the team. Yeah. What does that leave? Where does that leave Marco Simonovic? Wherever you can find yourself. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. You, he's got to prove it. He's is this summer it. league a make or break summer league and, and, and preseason and preseason? And are, are those going to be make and break for Marco Simonovic in a way? I I think it's going to be like I think the thing is right. Like I think Marco's going to end up. I hope he's more, but like I really think Marco could end up just being an end of the bench big like Tony Bradley was, and Tony Bradley might accept this player option. So you might oh, not he's even going have, to accept Tony Bradley. Know, like man, he's probably like, talking to his agent. Like all right, man, listen. What deals can we get out there? And his agent probably looked at him and said, "said uh, man, listen here. If you don't take this deal, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire you." Like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tony Bradley called in and said, "Hey, agent, uh, Mr. Agent, I'm just, you know, I'm just calling because before I accept this, I just want to know, you know, what what deal could I possibly get?" And this is what Tony Bradley's agent said. <laughs> Not the laugh track. He, he actually played the laugh track. There he just multiple, played the laugh track. There was Hung multiple the phone. people in the office when Tony Bradley asked. <laughs> yeah. That's bogus. Uh, you hey, lie. Yeah. But I will say this. All jokes aside, I know I just threw a little shot there. Tony Bradley as your third big off the bench, if you're if your rest of your lineups improve, you can do a lot worse. You can do a lot you worse. Can do a lot All jokes aside. You Tony, can do a lot Tony came in. He gave us solid production on that West Coast trip. That was about it. Um, yeah, he said, listen, that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. That's the whole season. So I, I don't know, bro. Like Marco's not a lock for me. Marco, Marco couldn't even, we had a, a we had a two guard playing power forward and the seven foot dude couldn't get on the court. <laughs> 
Uh, Billy and Donovan we, said, what bigs do you want me to play? And Marco <laughs> was sitting there. I'm glad you said that because one thing that a lot of Bulls fans blame Billy Donovan for, for small ball. And this is what I got to say to you. Do you see the team that AK gave? Oh, he had a small I don't, ball team for I, sure. I don't think that Billy Donovan is sitting there like, you know what? I just want to play small. I think AK is saying, listen, I got you a bunch of long athletic players with, with, with big wingspans. They about, they about six eight though. What can you do with it? <laughs> and Billy Donovan said, hey, man, listen. I, hey, bro. I'm going to cook the best meal I can cook with it. I need a forward. <laughs> <laughs> I need at a minimum a forward. But, I, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, that that's the biggest question about Marco. Like, yeah. listen, at a minimum, you couldn't get on the court when it was nobody seven feet tall. We put a 6'4 dude on the court. So... I don't know what Marco's going to be. I, I'm interested to see what he's going to bring. He's probably one of the more people I'm more interested in in Summer League out of anybody. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Justin Lewis makes the makes the final roster because I, – and I think the Bulls are going to go with guys like that more so than even some of the smaller guys that are on this team. You could be see a Troy Brown or something like that. Move the guard guys because mm -hmm. – um, because of how many injuries we had last season, you're probably going to want those guys that are bigger and more versatile. I tell you what, if the Bulls do re-sign Tyler Cook, it tells me everything I need to know about Marco, and they add more bigs too. It tells me everything that I need. We need to the, the question. Like, listen, I because Marco can't. He showed you last year the G League. He can learn nothing else from the G League. He damn near no. dominated in the G League. He he should have won MVP. If you can't do if you can't do that or something, so I don't even need you to do that exact thing. As a big in this situation coming in, I just need Marco to give us eight and five off the bench. That's what I need from Marco this season. If you can give us eight and five off the bench with consistent minutes and not look like you lost on defense, yeah. all right, we can see what we can build after that. I need eight and five from Marco. I'm setting the bar low. I need eight and five from Marco this season. I mean, he's a bench big. If you can't give me eight and five, I can't use you. <laughs> that's you realize that's four buckets and really like three buckets and maybe a free throw and five rebounds <laughs> you're seven feet tall put your arms up brother <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man but that that's all i got you got anything left for today nah man that's it man we appreciate y'all for showing love for another show man make sure y'all follow us on everything at locked on bulls follow me on everything at pat the designer Yes, and thank you so much for the growth that we've seen recently as well. The, the, oh, yeah. the channel's been on fire here They've lately. They've been showing big love on the YouTube side. So, hey, we tweaking, though. We got to get these people a jersey. We said 5,000. We almost at six. Oh, yeah. We got to get. We got to do a jersey. So be on the lookout. We will do something. Let's do something. We'll announce exactly how we're going to give the jersey away tomorrow. That's Wednesday. And then maybe, depending on how things go, maybe we go live Friday and, and, and pick the winner. I'm down for it. All right, cool, cool, cool. But make sure you follow me at CEO Hayes, at CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, go and get up to date uh, latest news and rumors around the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked On NBA. Locked On NBA is your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. It's available wherever you get your podcast. But for Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls, and we out. Peace, y'all. Y'all stay safe out there, man. Peace. <laughs>